actually send the command and deliver the power to do it. So um, we obviously, you know, I, I get paid to say that, right? The solution is SoulChip because we have a system that in our minds connect to pretty much any sensor, uh, can control pretty much any valve, uses lower one communication that sends it to the cloud and then provides a whole bunch of decision support systems or options to, to make the smart recommendations and, and close the loop. But let me dive a little bit deeper into how this works. Um, how, how this works and, and, and what we can do about it. So, uh, just one second, sorry. And let me just jump in. You may need to take control again. Um, I think that Phoebe accidentally had taken control of the meeting, which might be preventing you from advancing your slides. Okay. There you go, um, I think you got it. Okay, I got it now. All right, so I, I could never say that enough time. The solution is salt chip, right? But I think we, we spoke about that. But let me tell me, tell me how, uh, let me tell you how it works. So the core technology that we started developing is what you see here on the slide is essentially a solar panel on a chip. So very small, uh, very efficient, highly integrated. So you could place it directly on a PCB and also works in low light environment. So it could be working in a greenhouse. It could work in the you know, north of London where you don't always have you know, the bright sunshine that you have in, in other areas. And so we use that to basically continuously trickle charge a, a battery that then provides us 24 seven, 365 everlasting energy. We say that our systems last 10 years, they could easily last more. And this power gives us the energy to both measure the sensors, to do two-way communications during, uh, using LoRa, but also to give bursts of power to turn on or turn off a valve. Um, one vendor that realized that this is a good thing is Netafim. Netafim, you know them as, as a leader in drip irrigation. And so what you see here, uh, what you see here in this uh, image is uh, and at the theme NetBeat system, and here there's an external box that's essentially, we sometimes call it a solar battery. Uh, so it's a soul chip, the chips, and then a, a very high efficiency charging circuit, and that can provide power to Netafim. Netafim is starting to roll these out, and we see many other applications where this everlasting source of energy that could be useful also certainly has some. Uh, uh, environmental benefits if you don't need to replace batteries, you know, you don't need to discard batteries and so on. Um, but then at the heart of our system is, is this device, the, what we call the Soltag. Uh, it has the energy that it needs to operate, it has lower one communications, but then it has a flexible through a connector box. Today we support a few dozen types of sensors, again, from uh, soil moisture to leaf moisture, from fruit size to stem water potential. And we add sensors all the time. People come to us and say, I want this sensor, that sensor. We can add that very easily. So here's an opportunity to use a single platform that consolidates all these sensors together. Now, how does the data flow today? I, I, I know I want to be... Uh, respectful of everyone's time. So let me just explain what, what we do today. So a single Soltag unit can connect up to uh, six simultaneous sensors. So actually uh, four sensors and two digital inputs, which could be used for counters such as uh, wind speed or flow meter and so on. It could connect and control uh, three valves and two dry switches. So a lot of integration into a single unit. Uh, of course, you can have multiple units, as many as you want. They get connected to a lower one network, and then they go to a things board server that we have at the moment that both helps store the data um, and uh, translate it. So uh, translate it from arbitrary values into usable values and so on and so on. And from that point on, you can use various APIs uh, to, to do something else with the data. So one thing that... Uh, we did in the last couple of weeks, and I, I was hoping to be able to demonstrate it today, but I'm not sure I have the time, is we've created the connector to FarmBeats. So from the Soltag system, 
you can get the data to flow directly into FarmBeat and, and then do whatever it is that you wanted to do there, whether display or action or, uh, or big data and so on. Uh, we can also, uh, we either have uh, pre-existing integrations, whether it's with other cloud systems or, or uh, other things, board servers, or just a customer system where you say, I can either have a pull API or a push API. So you don't have to use our GUI. You don't certainly don't have to use the things board GUI. Uh, we have developed our own GUI uh, that we think is more suitable to precision agriculture than what things board have. But basically you have full control of the data. You can take it to FarmBeats, you can take it to your system, you can take it uh, and just use it uh, as is. Um, we're starting to offer sort of starter packages to uh, universities and other research institutions that want to experience this, that want to start plugging uh, uh, their own sensors, that want to replace aging communication systems or experiment. So we think that by having an open system from a hardware standpoint and a pretty open system from a software standpoint, we can give a, a really good solution both to the Farm Beats community and to academic institutions in general. So I hope Stacey, that wasn't too long and uh, certainly happy to take questions. No, not at all, that's great. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the product? I guess I have a quick question. This is uh, Akeem Weatherspoon at Cornell University. You said that this is integrated with FarmBeats. Um, Maybe you can say a little more about what that means. Is that the the sensor box itself, or the sensors connected to the sensor box, or the sub edge, or you know, all of the above? So we've basically used the FarmBeat uh, API, and so the data from our system, the sensors, after translating them to usable values, uh, would just flow into. Uh, farm beats just like you have today from a, say a Davis weather station. So the data becomes immediately usable inside farm beats. It's interesting your graph here shows things board. One of our um, collaborators PIs on the project uses things board a lot. Um, as a side, why, why do you use things board? Does it just provide a nice GUI? Well, we actually uh, are moving away from using the Things Board GUI, but it, Things Board does allow us to do nice things with regards to um, collecting the data, to storing it. Uh, if you don't want to store it in, in Azure or FarmBeat, it has a nice alerting mechanism. It has a lot of pre-built integrations into other systems. And so uh, originally at SoulChip, we were using the Things Board GUI just for our customers, and you could still do that, but now we're developing um, our, a better GUI for precision agriculture, uh, whether showing specific maps or allowing better drill down or more flexibility in setting up uh, dashboards uh, and so on. But we found, we found that at the very least at the back end of things board is something that, uh, that we are happy with. Thank you. I was wondering how the, this is Andrew Nelson. Uh, I'm a grower and I also work a lot with uh, Microsoft and FarmBeats. I was wondering how these uh, soul tags are working in in more Northern or, or Southern uh, areas where, you know, in the winter you start getting a lot less light and, and snow and stuff like that. Is it something where they, uh, typically run out of power then or is there like a way to augment or or get you know northern climate soul tags so so uh soul tags actually do also work in northern climates i i, I mentioned you know uh, uk just as an example but the, mm -hmm. the chip does work in low light the there's an, a built-in rechargeable battery inside the soul tag system and that battery would last for three weeks. So for instance, if you mistakenly completely covered the unit uh, and it's not seeing any light, it would last for three weeks before it runs out. And during oh. these three weeks, of course, you'd get alerts and say, hey, you know, um, I'm not getting any light, you know, uh, help me out here. So even if we were installed in Texas, 
you know, these past couple of weeks, the unit would have continued to to operate. They're both IP67 in terms of temperature range and and water and turn and the energy. And to the second part of your question, yes, you could also augment them with an external power source. So some customers say, well, I, I actually want to bury this underground, or um, I want to have very, very frequent uh, opening and closing of valves, and so maybe you need more energy. So yes, you could also augment it with a, an external panel, with a, an external battery, or even DC power, if, if that's what you wish. Okay. No, this is awesome where it can also run valves and stuff like that. So uh, a lot more elegant than than my current small orchard setup. Um, and, and one cool. of the things we completed in in recent in uh, earlier this year was um, integration with. Uh, we're not married to it, but a decision support system that supports a couple of dozen crops, different crops have different requirements, how to manage, you know, whether it's managing uh, soil moisture or salinity. And so this is would be a decision support system that's crop specific and could give you irrigation recommendation based on the soil crop uh, sensing that you get from Soltag, as well as weather forecast. And weather forecast could come either from an external source like a DTN or from a Soltag powered weather station basically uses the same technology but connects to um, and, uh, a wind speed, a temperature, rain, evaporation, and so on, and, and these kind of sensors. So you really get a lot of flexibility both using it for weather forecasting, but also, of course, for crop management. So uh, this is Paula Yes, thank you, Stacey. This is Paula Ramos. Uh, I'm in the uh, NCSU University. Uh, so um, I have a question regarding with solar battery. So regarding efficiency during the uh, winter with low temperatures, what is the efficiency of the solar battery with low temperatures? I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but I can certainly uh, send to you or uh, if there's a way to disseminate information after that, I can send you a data sheet for the solar battery. Um, it may be that uh, one of the other salt chip guys, uh, Rami, are you on the call? Yeah, I'm on the call. And uh, the default uh, uh, batteries can sustain up to, uh, down to minus 20 C. And in special cases, we can go even to minus 40 C in special requirements. Have that answered answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions about salt chip? Okay, I'll, I'll work after the meeting to make sure we get the presentation and any spec sheets that are available and put them out on our team site if anybody's interested in looking at those. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next presenter is Gaganpreet from Purdue. Uh, Gaganpreet has a project that he wants to share some information. It's, um, let's see, a research study exploring sustainable IoT wireless sensors framework. And I think, do you have some slides that you want to share or would you like me to share those? Yes, uh, I have the slides. You can also share if you have. Okay, perfect. Why don't you go ahead and share and introduce yourself and your project a little better than, than I did, and let's hear what you have to say. All right. I'm sharing the screen. So are you able to see my screen? Looks like it's coming up. There is a little bit of uh, feedback. I'm not sure. If everyone have a blast. There we go. All right, thank you. Yes, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gagan Preet Singh Hindu, and I am a PhD candidate in the Department of Computer and Information Technology and working with Dr. Dennis Bookmaster and Andrew Balmos uh, on the deployment of IoT sensors at Purdue uh, test win sites. 
So uh, we are working on a research study that is exploring lean and green IoT wireless and sensor frameworks for different precision agriculture applications. So um, the idea is to um, differentiate the applications uh, probably in two categories, that is autonomous applications, farm field applications and monitoring applications. So uh, we need uh, both of them for the precision agriculture uh, for different reasons. Uh, for example, the water consumption uh, that is globally 85% of the water is consumed for the agriculture purposes. And as we see the uh, corn production uh, in the US has a prime source of nitrogen and phosphorus um, that is very harmful. And other than that, we have a data from USDA that highlights that the labor productivity and net farm income has gone down. Um, and we, therefore, like different precision agriculture applications are required. For that, uh, there is an adoption survey that has been conducted by uh, one of our own professors, Dr. Bruce Erickson uh, and uh, Dr. DeVore uh, here at Purdue. They have uh, uh, done this survey. They do it every year about, uh, every, uh, year about the precision agriculture applications and technologies adoption uh, just conducted among the Midwest region US farmers and you can see here the adoption there is a difference in the adoption rates um, as far as the yield monitoring applications are concerned uh, they have a higher adoption rate as compared to the other uh, cloud-based precision agriculture applications specifically the autonomous applications such as smart irrigation smart fertilization and um, farm machinery navigation. So there are like certain issues uh, depending upon the IoT framework. Uh, and as you were talked about, uh, there are like three basic layers in the IoT framework uh, for precision agriculture, for developing the precision agriculture applications. That is the first one is the uh, sensor layer where we decide about the type of sensors we need and uh, the, type, the number of sensor nodes we need for a farm field. So there are like different uh, decision variables, logistic variables and issues that are related to that, that are involved in the decision making. So uh, that relates with the communication type of communication uh, protocol we need. So it might vary with some of the decision factors such as um, communication range uh, required uh, from the sensor node to the wireless communication protocol technology and the data latency rate requirement, the data scalability requirement. Um, also, it might depend upon the important factor is the type of farm application we are using and the type of sensors we need. So all these factors might associate and relate to each other uh, and that goes to the ultimate uh, requirements that is the cost energy and user experience from the producer and the uh, person who is using especially the producers from the adoption purposes so uh, as we see like the data interoperability might relate to the uh, type of farm application especially the from the autonomous and monitoring applications perspective so uh, we are doing research with these objectives that is especially identifying the type of sensors we can use for two different types of applications that is monitoring row crop diseases and autonomous on farm field precision applications such as smart irrigation, smart fertilizing and farm machinery navigation. And then uh, how we can uh, efficiently and effectively uh, integrate these wireless sensors with the uh, communication, different type of communication protocols and which one are those might be more efficient in terms of cost, power and data scalability and effectively uh, in the range with the communication range and data latency requirements. So um, other important uh, research objective is to understand the dependency of different variables involved that are type of sensors, uh, type of wireless communication technologies and uh, data scalability, communication range, latency requirements uh, from user experience. So uh, we are conducting these focus group interviews uh, and we already done the two sessions. So uh, we would like to in invite the members from the farm meets community to contribute uh, in this research. It's like a 40 minutes interview uh, with other expertise uh, in different areas, like such as having expertise in wireless communication technologies and cloud computing uh, platforms. So uh, please, if you are interested, um, we would like to have you on the panel. 
so you can send me a message or text in the chat and I can reach out to you after after this session. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, I believe that if you participate, it will the study will be informed well among the practitioners and the producers. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions about the study or the participation? Did you say how many folks you're looking to have involved in the study? Um, like home, like it's, there is no number. Um, so who, whosoever is interested, like can send their. Uh, just let me know. I will I will uh, schedule a meeting with them personally by sending an email. OK, yeah. any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Can I please? Yes, so it was yeah. a pleasure to participate in your study, but uh, looking at the slides again, I wanted to clarify, I guess, one thing. You know, on the last slide, you mentioned you're trying to understand the user experience with the application programming interfaces. In this case, how do you define the user? Is it the person building the application using those interfaces, or is it the person using the application at a level above once it's been built? Yeah, thank you, Gloria, for asking the question. It's a very good question. So it's about the uh, from user experience point of view, like for the, like the producers who are adopting the technology. So it's their user experience. OK, yes, thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Any further questions? OK, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. And next we have also from Purdue, uh, Dennis Buckmaster, who wants to talk about the upcoming Open Ag Technology and Systems Conference and Hackathon. And I don't think you have anything that you wanted to share, but if you do, feel free to go ahead. Dennis, are you on line? I don't see him, Stacey. Yeah, I'm looking through the participants. I thought I saw him earlier. Do we have anyone that wants to represent the Purdue um, Oats conference or just say a word? Otherwise, we could just follow up with an email about the about the event. So I think Dr. Dennis Bookmaster is not able to join, um, maybe due to his account problem. So he sent an email, I think. Sounds good. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right, well, I'll send that information out to the team once I get it from Dr. Buck Buckmaster. Uh, he sent it out. And uh, he sent it out. Um, uh, I don't know if I can pull it up. Hmm, OK. March 24th to 26th. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. each each day Eastern Daylight Time. Great, thanks, Harold. We'll we'll share that with the the group. So that's the Open Ag Tech and Systems Center Conference, March 24th to the 26th. All right. Stacey, we go to that? Yep, last up today, we've got Dr. Landavar from Texas A&M who wants to share some information about an open position at their Corpus Christi campus. Dr. Landavar. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Elizabeth, for giving me a, a, a few minutes to, uh, to uh, make the, this announcement. Uh, I got a couple of slides that I'd like to uh, share, so people might understand uh, a little bit be uh, better what we're doing. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, Wonderful. you should be able to. All right, OK, here it goes. Uh, I think this is the presentation. Yes. Yeah, uh, yep. I can I see just, your slide. 
And I'd like to, let's see. Yeah. And I'm going to make it in presentation mode, uh, if I can. Yes. Yeah. Just uh, to th th thank you again for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to, uh, it, it, it might help to uh, understand our needs uh, if I show you what we're doing. Uh, basically, we are developing a, uh, a phenotyping uh, a research program. That's what how we began about uh, five, six years ago. Uh, you know, and with the idea of working with our breeders and our plant uh, our crop researchers and so on, and uh, helping them, you know, analyze their images and uh, and making better decisions on on, on uh, germoplasm selection and uh, and, inter and the interpretation of their experimental results. Uh, we um, developed uh, here at the center of our program is this uh, a uh, cloud-based data portal that uh, is the key the key component of our program you know where where, where basically we uh, use it to communicate with the users uh, upload images uh, process data and so on uh, to different levels uh, the uh, li green little boxes here uh, all the way up to developing artificial intelligence models, you know, with the data that has been collected. One advantage is that uh, allow us to standardize uh, uh, the data and uh, and share it among our different faculties, you know, for for use in uh, in, uh, in for you know for the programs. As we gain experience with uh, phenotyping and in uh, in in uh, small plot research, uh, we began to move into the right part of the graph, which is a uh, precision management uh, and again the core uh, of our program is uh, data collection with drones uh, and we've been very successful in collecting good quality data uh, with drones uh, and, uh, and the idea here is either use the uh, the drone data directly into uh, a, uh, tools that we can uh, use to help our growers or use that data to calibrate satellites and be able to move more extensively, you know, to different areas, you know, where, where there is no uh, uh, information and, uh, and uh, you know, where we, where we don't have drone data. Uh, but the idea is either to use drone data or satellite data, you know, to develop uh, a um, in season management a, a, a prescriptive a tools for, for our growers. Again, the key component for us is this. Uh, a, um, a, a, um, a cloud-based uh, data portal, you know, for the data processing and communications. Uh, uh, this is an interesting component also of our program, uh, which is the uh, the uh, educational component, uh, where we plan to go all the way from K-12 to uh, to uh, producers. And, um, and um, um, the idea is, you know, to promote the use of digital agriculture technology. And then at the same time, you know, they uh, assist uh, uh, with the uh, with the outreach uh, 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 of this technology to uh, to producers. We are trying to figure out how can uh, we incorporate the uh, farm bit systems into both the phenotyping part and the prescription management. You know, some of the issues were described today. You know, and the uh, and the you know the uh, how can we complement our extensive uh, drone data? Uh, you know, to uh, to uh, and complement it with sensor technology, you know, and use the concepts of the farm beat program. But uh, more directly and more short term, you know, uh, farm beats fits very well in an educational component. So, sorry for taking so long to explain our program, but uh, our needs is to, uh, we're looking for a leader, <laughs> a, 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 a biologist, uh, a biological engineer person, you know, to lead the uh, the uh, management of this thing, you know, developing of applications and so on. Uh, we, uh, I send you a uh, position description uh, some time ago, uh, uh, you know, and this is the basic information and where, you know, and how to apply for the position. But uh, this uh, lines here in bold uh, pretty much illustrates what we're looking for. You know, we're looking for a person that understands, uh, you know, the biophysical processes of of uh, of uh, a generic type environment interaction, you know, so we can develop tools and in, uh, in, 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 uh, interpret the data and developing tools for for crop insistence and precision management. Uh, my email is in is in the mailing list uh, for this community, but uh, if you want to take a snapshot of this slide, uh, you know, it's clear there, and this is the link to apply online. Uh, it's a key position for a program. 
uh, and uh, it will appreciate that you uh, distributing this uh, or passing this information to anybody that might be uh, interested in uh, in, uh, in in applying. Uh, the position is open. Uh, we're going to begin a, um, a screening sometime in, in um, next month, but uh, we're going to keep it open until we find the right person. Thank you very much, and uh, and uh, 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 and I pass the uh, sharing of the screen to you guys again. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Landavar about the position? Okay. Let me um, share quickly. I did get the information from Dr. Buckmaster about the conference. And so let me just share really quickly, uh, but you can find the link um, here. It's at the oatcenter.org. And as mentioned, the Open Ag Technology and System Center Conference is on March 24th through 26th. And there will also be a pork industry hackathon. And you can find all that information here too. And I'll put the links out on our Teams channel. Um, the registration is free for the conference. Um, but you do need to sign up um, for space purposes. So if you have any questions, you can go out and take a look at these links, which I will share, and you can reach out to Dr. Buckmaster if you have any other questions. I'm sorry for the technology issues today. All right, we've got some time left over if anybody has anything else that they would like to share or any questions for our presenters. All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining. We'll post the video online as usual. And if you have anything that you would like to share with the group in March or coming up later this year, feel free to reach out to me or Elizabeth and we'll get you on the agenda to share with the group. Elizabeth, did you have anything else? No, I think that's great. Look forward to seeing you all next month. And yeah, please send us any um, suggestions on topics you'd like to hear about any updates you'd like to hear about um, if you want to do a deep dive on something or if you have an idea for something you'd like to present just reach out to Stacy and I all right thanks everybody thanks everyone thanks a lot thank you thank bye -bye. you bye bye thank you